What is degrees of freedom? Uh, degrees of freedom is a term most often used in statistics classes. Uh, I remember I first encountered the term in my intro to stats uh, in psychology class. Um, and I remember quite vividly my prof, he had quite a hard time trying to explain it to us. Um, I mean, he pretty much introduced us to the, the formula, uh, and he had a brief explanation of it, but um, it wasn't really, really clear. Um, and it took me a while to kind of just wrap my head around it. Um, so maybe I'll just write it down here. Degrees of freedom. And it's a pretty important uh, term, I'd say, because it's used in a lot of different calculations. Um, and although people might find it easy to calculate, uh, it kind of helps to understand what it is, like what it's trying to say. Because um, sometimes, maybe if you forget a formula, uh, sometimes having the pieces to it, so like the degrees of freedom might be a piece within the equation, uh, understanding the pieces might actually help you build the puzzle of the, the equation, right? Uh, I know that's helped me a few times in some of my classes. So the symbol used for degrees of freedom is df. Um, that's really the only symbol I've ever seen used. Uh, sometimes you see dots in between them. Um, they're all, they all just say the same thing. Um, so the best way to probably explain what degrees of freedom is is to maybe uh, use an example because, um, well, the formal definition of degrees of freedom is, um, I don't even remember, it's basically just the amount of values within a system that are free to vary. Um, so what does that mean? Uh, so it's not a very clear definition. Um, so let's, I'll explain it with an example. So say, for example, you have a distribution of numbers. So I love using distributions. So three numbers. Um, they could be anything. I mean, it could be the number of apples um, people have. Like maybe three groups of people. So one person has five apples, one is 10, one is 15. Um, so the average number of apples for those three people, the mean is 10. Um, and so let's say we want to figure out the how much each person deviates from uh, the mean. So it's, it's basically like the variance. So what you would do is you would do a minus 10 because that's minus the mean. So he's minus 5 units from the, uh, the mean of 10. Uh, the second person has the same number as the mean, so he's 0. His deviation is 0 from the mean. Um, so before I move on to the last one, um, let's treat this like a system. So the deviations here, like that you see here and here, uh, those deviations, we'll treat them as a system. So you know in total there's going to be three numbers within that system of deviations. So already uh, you can see um, that we have two of those numbers within that system. So uh, you have a minus 5 and you have a 0. And uh, if you recall, I, I hope I explained this in one of my previous videos, but uh, whenever you have uh, deviations from a mean, they all have to sum up to 0. Uh, that's just a rule uh, when you're talking about variability. So um, those three numbers, those three deviations that we're going to get from our system, they have to sum up to zero. So like down here, if you add the, those three numbers up, they have to equal to zero. So because you know that the system has to have a certain sum in the end, um, and you know two of those numbers within that system, so we know minus five and zero, the way you look at it is that the last value within that system has is restricted or it's limited to that number that causes the system to equal to zero. I hope that makes a little bit of sense. So because the two numbers within the system are minus five and zero, uh, so we can write it down like, uh, we can go, we'll use, yeah, I'll use green. So we'll go minus five plus zero plus something is equal to zero, right? Um, and so this last number can't be anything. It can't free to vary because it has to equal this last term, which is zero. So because it's not free to vary, that is not included within your degrees of freedom. So therefore, uh, well, maybe I'll just use, you know it's five, right? So that number is five. So therefore, only two numbers within the system are free to vary right? And so therefore the degrees of freedom for that system of three numbers is equal to two. Um, like another way I could po possibly explain it is um, 
those two numbers, you can assign any arbitrary values. Um, in this case, they weren't arbitrary because they were deviations. But if you have a system of three numbers, uh, you can assign the first two any arbitrary values. But if you know that that system has to equal to something in the end, that last number can't be arbitrary. It has, it's limited in what it can be. Um, so the general equation then for degrees of freedom, I'll just clean it up here, is pretty straightforward. Uh, in general, degrees of freedom is equal to n minus 1, where n is the number of values or terms within an equation. Uh, sorry, not an equation, within a distribution or a set of numbers or whatever. So it's always one less than how many numbers you have. So always imagine it in your head that you've uh, figured out all of the numbers within the distribution except for one, and because you know that the distribution has to equal to something in the end, that last number is restricted in what it could be. So therefore, only uh, one less than the amount of numbers is free to vary. So I hope that helped you a little bit. Thanks for watching.